Um, I'm curious for your thoughts on what the president had to say just moments ago, the Associated Press reporting that he said of the, the protests, uh, there is blame on both sides. He blamed the alt-left yeah. for the violence. You came out pretty strongly against him once on this. I mean, are you discouraged to see him going back to assigning blame to both sides on this? Uh, let us be very clear. This is not a time for pale pastel comments. This is a time for clarity. And this is a time to be absolutely clear. There is no moral equivalency in what happened in Charlottesville. We will not stand for the KKK. We will not stand for neo-Nazis. We will not stand for white supremacists. They don't belong in this country. They aren't a part of this country. And shame on anyone who fosters or propels their ideas. And we've got to make sure, and the president has a moral obligation, to make that crystal clear. Do you feel like saying that there's blame on both sides does foster some normalcy for There is no blame group. on other sides. This is blame on the KKK and neo-Nazis and bigotry and hatred, and we must be crystal clear. There is no other excuse for the kind of hatred and violence that we saw. Nobody can say, oh, the Nazis, the poor Nazis. Nazis are evil, and they must be named, and we will call it out every time. So to hear, again, the most powerful office in the land saying there is blame on both sides. I, 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 I haven't seen the statements. I've read what you've read. The president cannot be equivocal in his statements. And, and I, I, I look forward to making sure that we have those crystal clear, bold lines that we will draw, that I will continue to draw to make it clear there is no room for this in our country. You got asked this earlier if the president was fit to serve, I think, and, and you said that you thought he was. Um, I, I got a question from a viewer named Paul who wants to know why you continue to publicly support Trump when you've had to denounce him several times. Is there a red line, red line that Trump could cross that might lose your support for him? Well, I, yeah. your support for him. well I have opposed uh, policies of the president where I believed it was uh, important to do that. Uh, this is a, an example in Charlottesville when I didn't think the president went far enough to call out the hatred, the racism, and the bigotry that we witnessed. Uh, I've called out uh, my concern on a travel ban. I've also made it clear my concern on uh, the wall and better ways that we could move forward with it and immigration. And so and, uh, trade, NATO, you, Russia, you name it, I will continue to express my objections. I'll continue to express my uh, support for nominees like Neil Gorsuch, uh, who's going to be a great addition to our Supreme Court, a Coloradan that we will be proud of. So uh, I'm going to stand up for what's right, and I'm going to make it very clear when I believe things have been wrong. Uh, at the bottom of the issue here in Charlottesville, or at least one of the impetuses for it, was the removal of Confederate monuments. And I'm curious, like, do you have any strong thoughts about that? Is that whitewashing history to pull those monuments down, or do you kind of come down on any side of that Look, particular I thought? Look, I think we have to work as a community to address those elements of hate uh, and racism, uh, things that create those uh, challenges within our communities. That's where we should work with each other to try to resolve these issues. We should eliminate hate. We should eliminate the kind of pain and angst that has been created. But this takes a community. I don't think there's any one solution that we can do. We've got to work together to address this. We've learned recently there is a white nationalist group planning an event at the Cheyenne Mountain Resort next year called V-Dare, I think is how they pronounce it. Um, um, what would you say to the organizers of those group who, groups who want to come to Colorado and hold an event here? And what would you say to Colorado businesses who are being asked to provide services to them? Look, Look we have to use this as a, a moment to say why they are wrong and to teach our children why they are wrong and to make sure our communities understand why they, they are wrong and to make it crystal clear we don't accept that kind of ideology, that kind of hate, that kind of racism in this country. Last thing I got for you is you're holding this town hall after the big votes on health care. Some people would have liked to have had the opportunity to interact with you in this manner before you took those votes. Uh, why now would you commit to, to doing these before the next big controversial event? Well, we've held uh, over 100, I've held over 100 town halls in my time in Congress. We'll continue to hold town halls, tele-town halls, uh, because I believe in an all the above approach to addressing and reaching out and hearing back feedback from constituents. This year we've held uh, several tele-town halls with tens of thousands of people engaged in them. We've done employer town halls prior to the votes on health care where we visited with hundreds of employees at a time across the state. We've visited, we've done economic roundtables. We've held over 400 meetings on health care. We're going to continue to reach out to all four corners of the state, uh, and that's going to use that all of the above approach. When do your constituents deserve to know in advance how you might vote on an issue? Uh, well, again, I think uh, there was a lot changing. There were amendments that were being offered, and I think it's important that we not jump to conclusions on legislation that we haven't seen how it's going to ultimately result. Senator, I think we're out of time. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you Thanks. very much.